Welcome back to PSC Tech Bytes. First of all, let me remind you to subscribe to this YouTube channel by pressing the red button in the lower right corner of the screen. That said, today we keep on talking about the PMP Modern Search Web Parts family, and specifically, I want to explain you how to use the PMP Modern Search Results Web Part, which is really useful in order to render the output of the search queries. It can be configured to be connected with the search box web part, or it can be configured to be standalone. From a configuration point of view, you can configure the data source of the query, the layout of the output for the search, the extensibility model if you like to customize the behavior of the output, as well as the uh, connections to the other web parts. So, like always, let me move to the demo environment, let me show you how to use the web part in action. So, as we have already seen in the public repo on GitHub for the PMP Modern Search web part, which is available under Microsoft Search PMP Modern Search, you can go to releases and you can download the SPPKG file of the latest release of the PMP Modern Search web part so that you can install it in the app catalog of your target environment. Once you've done that, you can have a look to the official documentation of the search result web part, which is precisely this one that you will find in the list of web parts once you will have installed the package in the app catalog. Here we have a page where I have already uh, created an instance of this web part, and now I'm going to edit the page to show you some of the most interesting settings for this web part. So, click on the pencil. First of all, you can choose if you want to get your search results uh, from the SharePoint search engine or from the Microsoft search uh, engine, so uh, the uh, broad uh, search engine of Microsoft 365. Then you can eventually configure the layout slots, meaning that you can configure a set of slot names which will be mapping to the slot fields in the uh, output of the search results uh, so that, for example, you can reuse the same uh, template across multiple environments, simply changing the mapping between the slot name and the slot field. Then you can eventually configure the query text uh, or you can just get the query that is coming from uh, the uh, connected search box web part, as you will see uh, shortly. And you can configure the scope of your search results if you are using uh, SharePoint search uh, between uh, the local SharePoint sites, uh, you can choose just the documents or a uh, lot of other options available for you to configure and fine grain uh, the output of the results. You can also select the properties that you want to have in the search results. Usually this drop-down takes a while to load because it has to go through all of the properties available in the uh, search uh, index and then you can select the properties that you want to have. Like for example, uh, I don't know, the uh, uh, order of an item uh, or the content type ID, the created, created by, the title and any other managed property in the search that you want to configure and make it available in the search results in the output of your search result. Then you can select eventually the sort settings and you can specify some refinement filters. Like for example, let's say that you want to get all of the files or all of the items with a specific content type ID. You can say content type ID and you can provide the ID of the content type to filter all of the results in the specific instance of the search results web part. There are a bunch of settings about the language, which are quite interesting, especially about the localization, as well as you can configure paging of the output of the results, as well as the highlighting of uh, uh, properties in the output, if you like. By clicking on the next button, you can go to the layout settings. Here, you can choose between using handlebars and HTML. Here, there are a set of predefined output, like the details list, or the cart list, or the slider, or this list, or you can, for example, use this one, which is really useful when you are building your solution. The debug one will give you back as a JSON output the whole content of the search result so that you can see what properties you have and what you can do with the search results before uh, uh, creating the actual output of the search results. You can also provide a custom layout, and here you can play with handlebars and define your custom layout of the output. If you rather want to use adaptive cards, again, you can have the predefined adaptive card list, or you can use a custom one, and again, by clicking on the uh, curly brackets right here, you can provide the JSON of an adaptive card, which will be used to render the output of the search results. Once you've done that, by clicking next, you go to the connections. 
And here you can, for example, configure, like I have done in this uh, uh, sample page, that you want to get the query text uh, from a connected web part. And dynamically, here I'm getting the search box uh, search query to uh, feed the uh, search query, which will be executed by the search results web part. You can also connect uh, to a filters web part your search results web part, like I'm doing right here. So here I have connected my search results with these uh, search filters. You can eventually provide also a verticals web part if you want, and you can also create a kind of a master detail list of results where you can connect a search results web part to another search results web part. And then, last but not least, in the last configuration panel, you can configure the extensibility libraries, which can be again used to provide custom behavior to your uh, search results output. So, for example, you can add uh, additional functionalities to the handlebars layout by implementing a custom extensibility library or stuff like that. And again, you can click on the edit properties and export and import the settings so that you can reuse the same settings across multiple environments. And if you like, you can keep the PMP telemetry on so that we can know if you are using this web part or not, just that information to know how many people are using it and to know if we need to invest in this web part or not, or eventually if you don't want to have it, you can just click on the turn off and you will turn it off. Like always, thank you for watching this video, I hope you found it interesting and I'm really looking forward to seeing you next week. Thank you!